Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Garage. Learn it, build it, teach it. In this episode, we will be giving the swing link an arm. What on earth? Editor, what are you thinking? Kids watch this. The swing link is an arm that reverses the output of my Jeep's power steering box. It contains no human arms. I start out by making a template out of some sheet metal. Everything down here is tight. If I make the arm too short, I will run into my leaf spring. Make it too long, I run the risk of hitting something when my suspension is fully compressed. I could also overextend the tie rod end if the swing link's arm is too long. The arm may also not be symmetric. By that, I mean the lower half of the arm might be longer or shorter compared to the upper half of the arm. It all depends on where my tires hit my leaf springs. The sheet metal template gives me a pretty good idea on how everything will work. But a good idea is not good enough here. I need to be certain. So I make a second template. This one is out of quarter inch plate. Besides cutting center and lower tie rod end holes, I mark center. I do this with the use of a 45 degree chamfer bit on my mill. It cuts a small groove into the plate. Once I find the upper tie rod position, I can use the center mark to precisely measure its location. Okay, the lower mount looks good. We need to fit the upper mount, which I eventually find, but it takes a lot of trial and error. During this process, I had an idea. If I make the pitment arm shorter, I can also make the upper half of the swing link arm shorter. This would give me some much needed room in this area. I drill and ream a new hole for the drag link to mount to. This will effectively shorten my pitman arm. Except I'm wrong. I later find out that this new pitman arm length is much too short. My wheels can't turn as sharply as I would have liked. So I buy a new pitman arm and throw this one in the trash. <sighs> Unbeknownst to this, I test my new pitman arm and swing link arm. Everything seems good considering how loose everything is. Now that we know how big of an arm we need and the position of everything, we can make the real arm. I place what can only be described as a large chunk of steel into the mill. I square up the sides by facing it. I do this to not only give me a square edge, but to make sure that the steel will be secure within the vise. A flatter edge being more easily clamped in a mill vise. I start out by cutting a hole in the center. This hole will mount to the shaft of the swing link. I use a hole saw for this. And I of course bore out the hole to the needed diameter with a boring head. My plan is to have a shrink fit on the shaft. This way, I will be able to remove the arm if I need to. I then drill and ream the two holes for the lower and upper drag links. If you're wondering what all this reaming is about, let me explain. Tie rod ends, the things I am using at the end of my drag link, have tapered studs for mounting. Basically, the tie rod wedges itself into a hole but this hole has to be cut at a taper. This is what the ream does. It cuts the hole so that the hole's walls are at an angle. If you remember back to episode three, we left the shaft of the swing link long. Since I know where the arm will fall now, it's time to cut off the excess. I turn down the shaft so that it will fit into the hole that we made in the arm. Sadly, I goofed somewhere. I was hoping to make this a shrink fit so I would need to heat the arm to make it go onto the shaft. This would be a semi-permanent fit. It would allow me to remove the arm if I ever had to repair something. But I either made the shaft too small or the hole too big. So now the arm easily slides onto the shaft without the need of heat. Because of this, I now need to weld the arm to the shaft. If you're wondering why we're so far away, I didn't want to hurt my new GoPro. Now I don't know about you, but I think this is looking sharp. A little too sharp. Let's knock off those corners. I first apply marking fluid. Wait for that to dry. And then I use a round piece of steel to mark out the radius. With a bandsaw, I cut the corners. I then finish up the radius using a belt sander. Now, don't that look nice? And the swing link arm is done. Man, that was refreshingly easy. 
Next video, we paint and assemble the swing link. I'm sure it'll be just as easy as this was. That's what we call ironic foreshadowing, I think. In the meantime, follow me on Instagram, at 610GarageB. There I post pics and videos of my current builds.